The opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the speakers and presenters. They do not represent the opinions or views of the Equita Group, Equita Final Expense Services, or its affiliates. Hey there, podcast land. I'm fired up right now. This is Chase Yurick. I'm at the Equita Home Office, as always. I'm sitting in front of about three-quarters of a million dollars in production. Uh, unbelievable. Super excited today. We've got Josh Jensen, Roger Chan, and Rita Alouche with me. I'm excited about this. I have no updates for you other than get yourself to Las Vegas, March 21st, March 22nd. Get your room booked. Get yourself RSVP. Get your seat reserved. You're going to get an opportunity to network and meet with these fine gentlemen here. Probably going to have some off-the-wall conversations. Probably going to take it a little too far. Probably going to have a little bit too much fun. But you want to be there or you're going to be square. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. So we're here, we're live, Rita's recording while we're doing this. Uh, I'm excited, like I said before, if you just logged in, we've got Josh Jensen, Roger Chan, Rita Luch in the office today. Uh, fortunate enough to have them in with us for the week to do some builder training. Uh, and why not? Why not just rope them in and do the podcast today, uh, episode 17, In the Trenches. So we're going to go ahead and get rolling. We've got some things we're going to talk about. Who better to talk to them with than, uh, than these guys? Uh, for a personal producer, if you're on the line right now, you, you need to have a pen and paper handy. Uh, definitely going to want to be tuned in, take some notes. You're going to get to have insight and uh, peek in the mind of these guys on how they do what they do. We're going to spare you with the regular questions. Hey, Josh, how do you door knock? Hey, Roger, how do you set a point? We're not going to do that today. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive. We're going to go a little bit further. So first thing we're going to talk about, everybody was talking about how big money management is. We're going to dive right into it. Let's talk about money management. All three of you guys doing pretty well. Roger, you're probably the baby in the business, uh, but you're killing it. Last year, number five in the entire company. Um, what, fourth year in the business? Yes. That's unbelievable. Uh, over 250000 in production last year, just ridiculous. Getting better last year was, was right under two, if I'm not mistaken. Just growing like a weed. Let's talk about money management as you find yourself getting into a you know position where you're making more money than you're accustomed to making. How do you manage that? How do you keep yourself uh, where you need to be? Well, for me, I think uh, a lot of times when you're a new producer out there, you know, when you're making these sales, uh, you're not used to the amount of commissions uh, that you can make uh, compared to, like, just a regular job. So, you know, they always say that leads are the lifeline of the business. And if as soon as you start getting those commissions, leads will always take priority uh, to pay off first. Because if you don't have leads, you won't have any – you won't have cash flow. So – if you make your commissions and you, you just you just blow it on you know whatever hobbies electronics devices what have you, and you're you're using the rest for leads, uh, that's to me that's the wrong approach. And I, I always put the commissions to pay off your lead bill first, and then whatever you have left, that's you know that's what what, what you can use to either you know throw into your bank account or use it as plain money, but. Uh, the prior, priority should always be on purchasing your leads first. If you don't have any inventory, then you're not going to survive long in, that, in this business. And that's that's how I always like to approach it. So don't go buy a Corvette immediately. Yeah. What? Gotcha. Don't go buy a Corvette immediately. No, you never buy a Corvette. You lease it. <laughs> Dollar is that. Uh, no, you know, to kind of piggyback on that, um, I agree. You know, it, it's in, I've always been the one that's been, you know, really good at budgeting. Um, I don't spend money. I try not to. You know, it was you know, I'm making more money than I ever had without this and, and you know, the other day. So, you know, I want to treat myself to something. You know, what what can I buy? And you know, most things that I have I already I, you know, I already need. So I think I just went and bought like a new gaming system. I spent a couple <coughs> hundred bucks and that's something buy at night. So I let my mom or my wife spend all my money um now, but you know, even still. But it, it's most important. I mean leads, you know, Roger's right. It's non-negotiable. You know, I used to have a, I had an agent that uh, works with me, and when he first got into the business, you know, I was explaining to him, you know, he owned a gym, and I was explaining to him about, 
you know, he wanted to go spend money for leads or on other things. I said, now you need leads. I was like, you got your gym. I was like, what's the first thing that you pay? You can get paid. So it's the rent. I said, okay. I was like, because if you don't pay the rent on your studio, guess what? You don't have a place for people to come work out, right? I was like, leads is your rent. You know, it's the first expense that comes out. Not, not your mortgage, not, you know, your car payment, not your cell phone bill. Leads. You know, because you can take that money and immediately flip it, um, you know, into a profit to pay off all your other bills. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, uh, you know, I, I learned that from Josh, you know, when he hired me. And uh, I followed, you know, every step he said, and there we are. We are successful. Um, let, let me let me go from, like, a different door because I'm sure that uh, a lot of you guys listening will be like, yeah, you know, we listen to you guys. You're sitting there maybe dressed nicely and maybe having a hundred and hundred fifty thousand dollars cash in your account. It's so easy for you to talk about leads and buy leads. Me, I'll go backwards. I remember when I started in this business, I didn't have money. You know, I mean, I had a studio and I didn't have cash flow. I really didn't. You know, I was making money from the gym and whatever I had, I spent it. And... Uh, you know, I remember when, you know, when Josh said, you know, get into this business, you know, it's very fruitful. You can make so much more money, which, thank God, I agree. Everything that he said had happened. I'm very thankful to him and everyone's efforts. And uh, at the beginning, it's like, you know, you have to have a good money management. You know, it's like you're going to save the money for the lease no matter what. And I remember uh, one time um, I had some money. You know, I didn't have much, but either I had the choice to pay my rent or my mortgage or go buy lease. And then I learned, like, you know, you have to go buy those leads. With the leads of the money, you can pay, you can prepay your, your, your rent three months in advance. But I was very nervous. But you know what I did? I did it. You know, I get some leads. I went out. I sold them at, uh, I think, $22,000 in my first month. I prepaid my mortgage for four months. So I had to forget about it. So now all the money I was making, I was reinvesting in the company. So as you're struggling right now at the beginning, you don't have much to, you know, to buy your food or to pay your rent. Just think about it. The money that you're receiving, it's not your money. It's your company's money. Stop thinking like, you know, you're an employee. You are a business owner. So when the money comes in, the leads money should be on the side. They are not yours. You're not even authorized to touch it. Actually, I opened a different business account just for the leads. I opened it. It's not mine. I can't touch it. I don't have it. So I think that should work for you guys. Well, you know, it's too crazy, it's crazy Chase. Um, you have a lot of times, you know, you talk to people, I don't have money for leads. You know, they, they make it a money issue, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I flat out, and Rita's been there when I've asked agents, you know, I, I ask the question, you got credit cards? Well, yeah. Can you open up more? You know, uh, do you have 401k that you can borrow from? You know, do you have, can you take a home equity loan? You know, can you go get a small personal loan or a small business loan? I was like, can you borrow the money? Well, well yeah. I'm like, so is it really a money issue or is it a priority issue? And yeah, because I think, you know, if if you're desperate enough, you're hungry enough, you want this to, to, uh, to work, you can find the money. Even if you're you're starting out and you're broke. Like when I, I was broke when I started this business, I went and sold things. Like possessions are I have. And you know what? I see these people making money, and, you know, I got these, I got a couple old phones I had, you know, I had uh, old games I had, stuff that wasn't going to make me money, it was going to actually make me more broke, because it's going to be a distraction. I sold it so I could have money for leads, to get going. Well, there's people nowadays that, that will literally say, oh, if you're, if you're hearing a company tell you, you know, do anything and everything you can to get, you know, get a lead order in. They're just trying to sell you leads. That's BS. I know Roger, he's got a guy right now that he works with that we're all excited about. He sold a few of his guns to get going. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's doing whatever it takes. And when it comes to entrepreneurship, if you, whoever you're into, whether it's like Holden's into Cardone or whoever, they're going to talk to you. To whatever you got to do, get that investment capital. Yeah. Get it. You're right. I mean, I look at like a good friend of mine's on board with it, Nevin Clark did this. He had, you know, he got his license. You know, he just started working his warm market. He started talking to people that he knew, you know, and, and he wrote a big sale. And I said, dude, you're going to get paid about two grand. I said, no matter, I was like, what you need to do so you don't spend that money, you need to call Kelly tomorrow and just have them take all of it out. Just all of it out, get you, you know, four weeks worth of leads and a, and a couple of weeks worth of uh, um, 
Facebook leads. So I was like, because here's the thing, dude. You go broke tomorrow, right? You're struggling. Maybe you don't do well with those Facebook leads. Guess what? You still got the inventory coming in. Yeah. I was like, with 80 leads, man, to say you can't at least make your money back would be crazy. I mean. Well, I know one thing about the you three guys in particular. And, and Rita, Rita's credit card declined last week. And Rita was pissed. And he was pissed because, number one, he knew the money was there. It was an error on our part, come to find out. And so the reason I bring that up is there's a trend with successful producers. They they want that money taken. They want that order placed, and they want the leads mm-hmm. every single week. Chan, Chan will get up in somebody's butt if you're like, hey, why is my money not taken? Why have you not drafted my card? I want to make sure my leads are going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. He's not waiting until Saturday because, you know, the leads are delivered normally. Then he's like, hey, my card wasn't charged today. What's the deal? Where are we at? There's a trend with successful producers. They're going to make sure that money's set aside and those leads are always coming. Well, it's, it's just like you own a grocery store, you know, and, and the truck order doesn't come in for your groceries. Like how you're freaking out because now you got people that are coming in that want to buy groceries off you, but you don't have any. Yeah. You need inventory. It doesn't matter. It's a business. I mean, and and the great thing about this 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 business is it literally chases. And people don't believe me. I told I told my boy this, and I. And I messed them up and I said you know I have a license to print money because you know, we don't sell stuff like we really don't like we literally can just print money because um, you know we go into our house we basically talk to somebody we fill out some forms and guess what we get paid we didn't leave them with nothing you know we get paid yep. yeah, we I, are not selling anything it, and I agree. It's all like a mindset. You know, I let Roger talk a little bit on this because I always look up to Roger and his numbers and so on. But it's all about mindset. You know, it's like how, you know, you know how you see yourself, where do you expect to be, you know, within six months to a year? How can you plan and prepare for it and attack it? Right, Chan, what, what do you think? Yeah, like you have to have the mindset of an entrepreneur. And a lot of people, they want to be entrepreneurs, but then, you know, when you say something like, oh, you know, I just don't have my, I can't take leads this week. That is, to me, that's akin to somebody saying, I want to get in shape. I want to put on some muscle. But then you go, you go to the gym and then, and then you hear them say, oh, you know what? I, I don't have the strength to lift that weight. Well, then why are you here? Why are you at the gym? If you can't lift the weight, then maybe start off small. Get something. Start off, have a place to begin, and then maybe take more leads, you know, as you progress. You know, start with a small weight so that you can, build that strength to take on more weight in the future. But if you just go in mm. with the attitude that I can't do it or I can't buy leads, I don't have money, then this maybe you're not in the wrong you're not in the right place. This business is not for you. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to run your own business, that's the type of mentality that, that it takes. Yeah, I remember telling uh, one agent I was trying to hire, right? And I said, Hey, you know, what if you go to Vegas, right? And uh, you go to a gambler, right? And you say, Hey Give me 600 bucks, right? And then give me a week. And then I'll come back and I'll give you $2,000. He said, wow, the guy will go crazy. I said, will he give me another 600? He says, yeah. I I said, yeah. Can I give you 600? I know. And then he goes, no. I said, you know, he's going to give you $1,200. All right. So I'll tell the guy, give me 1,200. I'll give you four grand. I said, now I have credibility with this guy, right? Because he gave me 600, I gave him 2,000. He gave me 1,200. that's the same thing with the lead. You are you are giving you are buying six hundred dollars worth of lead, right? And this is not gambling because in this business you get twenty leads. If you are bad, you sell five. You make six to eight hundred bucks. Let's say you're on six hundred dollars, and you go, you go out and you sell five apps. You're making four five thousand dollars. I mean, I'm talking about six hundred dollars, and your you know uh, ROI, which is return of investment, is four times more. You just cannot lose. You just can't. It's just about mindset, man. Look, you know, you can listen to us talk every day and every night, right? If you're not hungry, if you don't have an ego where you can say, you know, if they did it, why can't I do it? You know, if you cannot challenge yourself and say, you know what, I can do this. It's never going to work for you. If you wake up every morning waiting to listen to a podcast, you're in the wrong business. If you're not hungry, if you're not hustling, you know, if you're not out there in the road, you know, if you don't, if you, if you don't feel like, you know, you can do anything in this business, it's not going to work. I mean, it's all about, you know, your, you know, the way you think. It's just the way you think. Like, you know, if, if Jensen is making a million bucks, I mean, you know, if, if uh, you know, if he did it and he told me he was broke, he sold cell phones, 
Well, if Jensen says jump, I'll jump. He was broke. If Ben Bowman going from where he was, you know, I mean, we all know the story. Ben into becoming this successful guy. I, I mean, he did it. I mean, he did it. If he did it, you can do it, and anybody can do it, unless you just want to find excuses. And if you do that, hey, we can do 8,000 podcasts. It's not going to change anything. So it's all about attitude, man. It's just go ahead and do it, or just move to the side and let the one behind you just move forward. And, you know, five years from now, you'll be like, what have I done? So just get it done, man. So we talked about the mindset regarding the financial side of the business. I want to stay, I want to stay on mindset, but I want to talk about, the mindset regarding day-to-day operations, how you go out and you grind. And I know you've done a call on it. You've done a call on it. We've talked about it at nauseum. Staying on mindset, let's talk about the grind every day, the no's, the houses, the, you know, the people that don't want to talk to you. There's a mindset that you have to have. It's a grinder mindset. Let's talk a little bit about that. you got to be a bulldog. I feel, I mean, I go in this very quickly because I spoke, but I left. I'm sure that uh, Jensen and Chen knows more because their numbers are much better than mine. I got to respect for that, but a year from now, we'll see. Uh, like, when I go to a house and I don't knock, behind that door is the person who has 30 of my dollars in their pocket. You send me a lead, you already owe me 30 bucks. So if I give you $5,000, and then I come to your house and ask for it. I'm going to like don't knock like, yeah, hi, uh, Mr. Chase. Can you please give me my 5000 No. I'd be like, yo, Chase, where's my five grand? Where, where's my five grand, right? So when I approach every door, I will approach it, you know, with respect, you know, with calmness. In the same time, the person behind that door owes me money. They owe me 30, they owe me $30. So they have, I have at least get back my $30. So I'm not going to say, you know, I, you know, some of my agents I train, they say, you know, before we get to the door, we are nervous, you know. What are they going to say? You know, how, how are they going to react? I just don't think. I'm going to go get my 30 bucks. So I just, you know, me, Chase, I'm like a tank. I'm, I just go and I just fire up and, you know, get it done. I'm, I'm sure that Chen is. Chen, I, I've seen you in the group chat before. You, you have a bulldog mentality. You take zero Zero guff. Not with the client, but I mean in terms of the approach. You're not going to waste time. No, no. no. And, you know, that's, that's something that when it, when it comes to the day-to-day activities, what I, what I, how I approach it is, you know, what happens that day, that's the most important thing that's going on right now. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. doesn't matter what might happen tomorrow. But the door you're currently at, that holds top priority. It doesn't matter if, you know, if I walk away from that house with a $5,000 commission, who cares? That's in the past. I still have a full day ahead of me. And it's, when you become complacent with, with your results, uh, that's when you will start to fail in this business. Because just because I made five grand in my last house doesn't mean I can take a break for the rest of the day. Who knows what's going to happen? That might, stay, that might stick on the books. It might not. I don't know. But what I do know is that I'm going to keep going, get as many apps in the bag as possible, and that I know as long as I keep doing that, I don't have to ride the highs and lows of, of the roller coaster in this business. And as long as you're keeping consistent with your activity, you're going to have business that falls off, but you know, you're going to have, as long as you're putting more business on the books that falls off, that's the most important thing because, you know, again, once you start getting complacent, you're going to sit back you're gonna have you're gonna have chargebacks. That's all a part of the game. But the whole goal is to have more policies stay on the books that then fall off, and you're gonna keep going. And as long as you keep going, you know, with that mindset, if you bring the men the mentality of an employee through your workday, that will help you. But then on the flip side, with the money management, you have to have the mindset of an entrepreneur. Because if you become complacent, you say, oh yeah, you know, I own my own business. I'm going to take a break. That's when you start falling behind. I think we've all seen some good good agents in this business fall off and fail out because they didn't do exactly what you just mentioned right there. I think some people just, you know, I always say, you know, this business is not for everybody. It really isn't. Anybody can do it. They really can't. You know, I've seen some people that are super introverts who go out and do it. They just follow the system. But, you know, I, I, I think for me it was always – wasn't always easy, you know. Um, 
But I was always, I've been told no my whole life, you know, from the time I was a kid, like, you know, my mom would say something, I would just keep going. I'd try to, like, sell her on why something. And usually, you know, she always had the trump card. It was called a backhand. Um, and that's when the conversation ended. Uh, you know, and growing up, you know, high school, college, no's, no's. My wife tells me no all the time. Um, you know, and you just got to figure ways to sell it. But um, it it just – people telling me no, it was me. And I think the biggest thing is kind of, you know, what Rito was saying is, I, you know, I paid $30 for this lead, you know, it better work. And, and I think that was the toughest thing I had to learn. And, and one of the hardest things that me personally to from going from a decent producer to an elite producer was just really remaining even keel. You know, and and I and it's very easy to say. It's very tough to do. It is very hard. Um, you know, there's some people that can, I've seen that come in and it's just nothing faces them. They just keep going, go batter and different. Like they just keep going. You know, but I was the type of person I'm crazy to begin with, and you know, <laughs> I I would book I, I would book 15 appointments and I'd be like like just woo, you know, fire yeah. up. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I have no apps, yeah. and I'm ready to murder somebody. <laughs> you know, I am not. People are like, you're ready to kill, kill themselves. You know, I, no, I wasn't ready to kill them. I was ready to kill somebody other than me, you know. It's like, you know what, I'm going to prison today. <laughs> like, it just, it was that. And and it took a very long while to just understand the that the numbers are the numbers. As long as I can keep going, keep pushing, um, this is going to work out, and that's kind of, you know, where to, you know, pull a full circle. Here, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about money management. I knew I still had money. All right, maybe I didn't sell that great this week, but next week's going to be awesome because there's just no way I can keep having this bad of yeah. I mean, you know, if you're, you're, you're not an elite agent until you've been in a slump. <laughs> Well, you just said something that I'm, I want to I want to kind of bring out for everybody, whether you're on live with us or you're in podcast land. These three guys here, I've never once, not once, and I'm not BSing. You guys tell me if I'm lying. I've never once had you have you call me and tell me these leads are bad. Not one time. Chan's kind of smirking and shaking his head. I yeah. mean, Jensen has tried leads before that we were testing out, and they didn't work out as well for me. But so it wasn't the lead's fault or. I just I've never heard you guys say that. That's something that I see from a new agent or an inexperienced agent that maybe is lacking mentorship. Hey, these leads are bad. These are garbage leads, or I haven't had success with these leads. It's, I've never heard you guys say that one time. Leads are never bad. You know, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, one of my agents also last week, and they were talking about leads. I got Facebook leads, and I don't think they are good. And I said, look, you know. I said, that, you know, we are all new in this business, right? I said, do you go to the mall? It, you know, he or she goes, you know, yes. I don't want to see if it's male or female, but, you know, that person said yes. I said, see, when you go to the mall and, you know, everybody's walking by and there is that, you know, uh, there is those guys who are trying to sell stuff, you know, like shampoos and, you know, whatever, right? He goes, yeah. I said, you know, they are kiosks, right? He goes, yeah. I said, when you walk by the kiosk, do you sometimes see people sitting there trying to try their product? He goes, yeah. I'm like, okay, did you try it? He goes, no. Were there people walking with you who didn't try it? You know, he goes, yes, or she goes, yes. I'm like, okay, everybody who was walking by there was a lead. They are not bad. But who was bad is that salesperson on that desk, right, or on that kiosk who couldn't, get them into believing in what they are selling so they can go out and sell it. So I said, everybody's walking is a lead. You're going to have 20 leads. If you are bad with what you're selling, every lead is bad because it relates to you. So he goes, you know, that's a good analogy. I'm like, that's what it is. I mean, there is no good lead or bad lead. A lead is a lead. There is a bad presentation. There is a bad training. There is, there is a bad mentality. There is a bad attitude. There is a bad mindset, that's what makes that lead good or bad. You know, because we all get the same answers. It's not me. I didn't say that up. You know, or we don't like the guy five times, he's not there. A wrong phone number. You know, uh, it's not my signature. We all deal with the same thing. A lead is a lead. We don't have a special lead coming from friends made by Versace in, you know, 
It's a lead. <laughs> it's a lead. It's the lead. It's coming from the same place you guys have. And, you know. I think Versace is Italian. Right, but it, they sell it more in France because it's more expensive in Paris. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying is that, look, you know, it's all about mindset. Man. We can go around this ball and try to kick it 5,000 times, man. You know, look, if you really want to make it in this business, I promise you, you know, if you get the leads, follow what everyone is saying, you know, you can make millions of dollars in the next 10 years. I'm telling you right now. And the good thing about this, you can reach out to us. Look, I don't care who your upline is. I don't care where you're working at. I don't care who, you know, who's your boss or who. Call us. Call me. Call Jensen. You know, call, uh, you know, uh, you, you can call all of us. I mean, call Chen. Like, call all of us. And we are here to help. Unless, hey, I got to say it, you know, unless you just are a loser and you're trying <laughs> to find excuses and trying to say, you know what, you know, I don't know if I can do it. And if you don't, it's okay. You know, I mean, you can go and you know, see maybe Josh, Josh Jensen can hire you to, you know, clean his Maserati. You, Chen, you come from a, Brita, that was unbelievable as always. Um, you came from a background where you weren't necessarily raised in the business on leads. You were having to do a lot of cold calling. Oh, yeah. A lot of, you know, your own lead generation to create activity. What was your first impression when you first started getting going on leads? Okay, so leads, you know, Rita brought up a good point, and I just want to touch on that. Where With the leads, they're, just, they're precisely that. They're just leads. And the only reason why I don't make sale on leads, there's only two reasons. I either didn't take enough leads or I didn't work enough. And leads, yeah, they're, they're all the same. You just go, my job, the, the leads will lead you to the places where the money is. My job is just to find it. So if you only have one lead in a in a senior community, a lot of times that is, that lead will lead you to the money where you just need to find it. So so many times I've just knocked on the door, you know, and that lead, that specific target of the lead wasn't home, but I see the very next door right next to it. Main door is open, screen door shut, cold knock, the door right next to it. I just created a lead and I just made a sale. So there's a lot of creative ways you can use these leads to generate money. So it's, you know, it's real easy to get laser focused on the leads, but, you know, if, if you just think outside the box, there's so much more money that can be made from one lead than one sale. But for somebody that's never worked leads prior to working with us, I mean, why didn't you ever call me and say, hey, these leads suck, or these leads are bad? You've ne you never did that, ever once. No, no, because that's just an excuse. Again, the only two reasons why you're not making money is because you're not taking enough leads or you're not working enough. One or two or both of them. Uh, you've gone to different areas, Josh, where it's like, hey, I'm going to travel to this area because you said you got leads there. I mean, you've had times where you've written 10000 in a week. You've killed it. But then there were other times where you're like, I didn't do much of anything this week, Chase. It wasn't a great week. You never once busted my chops about it's the leads or it's the area. It was never an excuse. No, it's it's a numbers game, man. It really is. And and you know, I remember I was um and I was training um Samir when he was getting going and we're out in the field and you know, he was seeing me get no he was seeing everything, you know. I always tell him, Angie, you come out with me, you know, you're gonna see everything. You're gonna see me get no's, you're gonna see me get yeses, you're gonna see me get through people's houses, you may see me do some crazy stuff because it's final expense. But when it's all said and done, there's no magic to what I do. There's no magic to what, you know, Chan does or Rita does. It's we put in the activity. That's all it is. But one thing that Samir brought up that made sense, he said, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if your first seven appointments, you know, you get knows. He's like, the commissions are so high in this. All you need is one or two to really make the day. You know, I mean, think about it. Like, we, we're, we're going out. We're complaining. We had a wait. We had a bad day. We only made, wrote a thousand dollars. Think about that. Like that's a bad day in final expense. You make a grand. See, and we're and we're ready. And some of us are ready to jump off a roof. Like we're so mad. Like I can't believe it. I only wrote a five hundred dollar app today. Oh man, I feel like a piece of crap. This sucks. Like and you're like you just made five hundred dollars. You, you already basically broke even on your lead cost. Everything you do now is profit. Mm -hmm. You go tomorrow and you make 500 bucks. You just made $500 in a day. We'll call it 250 a day profit. Mm -hmm. Go. Where are you going to go and, and make that kind of money? Cool. You know, then you go out the next day, right?
hundred thousand dollars. You know, and I mean, here's the truth: most most people out there, you know, it, it's we work hard, but you know, you think about it, like the amount of time, like the money we make compared to, you know, I mean, what we do and how many hours we really put in. You know, most agents, like I tell people, they come on board. You know. They say, you know, I want, I can only work part time. I want to work twenty five, thirty hours. I'm like, that's a full time agent, vital expense, man. But you have no idea. Like the most agents, they only work twenty, thirty hours, really. You know, but you, it's because it's so easy to make money in this business. It's I, I, when I heard the numbers on this, I didn't think it was legal. And you know, I said, that's drug dealer money. Mm, like yeah. that's that's not even drug dealer money. That's like the pen money. Yeah. You know, like. I don't think you can make that kind of money just like peddling on the streets. Like you got, like you have like a crew that you're running. Like you're an underboss or something. And and I'm like, you sure this is legal? And they're like, yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, I'm actually my friend is a lawyer, and he said, you know what I like about your business, Rita? He said you have zero student loans, and you are making more money than I'm making as a lawyer. <laughs> and think about it. Think about it. The guy went to school maybe for five gazillion years to learn the laws and everything, right? And the guy had like $175,000 student loans, and I just got off the street, and I followed what they said, and I made more money than him. He's thinking of doing final expense. He's a lawyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you think about it. Like Josh said, sometimes, I swear to God, man, I look at my bank account, and, you know, I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, you know, we are very, very blessed. We are very, very blessed. And each and every one on this call, or even someone who's not listening, whomever is, you guys can do better than us because I can assure you, and Chan will agree, and Josh will agree, and Chase will agree, we are not the smartest and the brightest guys of the crew. We are not. I'm telling you. You know, that's why when we started, we were broke. If we were the smartest, we wouldn't have been broke, right? We'd have had money and done whatever. But we followed the system, you know, we were in the trenches, we listened to everyone, you know, who, who made it successful, and there we are. You have, like, you know, you know, Josh Jensen, look at him. He's, like, more than one and a half million dollar agency. You know, I mean, Josh sold his phones to start this. Just think about it. All right, so you thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked a little bit about highs and lows for an agent. We talked about the mindset. It kind of goes into highs and lows. Let's talk about the lows. How we can how we can handle the load, how we can go about kind of circumventing the system of I just can't deal with this. This isn't for me. This, how do we go about it? What's the mindset? Is it just drudge forward, lean in like we talked about with Cole on Wednesday? Because those days are going to happen. If you're on the call right now, we're hearing the great stuff. Hey, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing now. There were some pitfalls. There were some perils. There were trials and tribulations leading into this. How do we drudge forward when we get beat up a little bit and punched in the face? Uh, for me, I just like to, you know, I, I, I have enough experience to know that that's going to happen. You know, I know that the the chargebacks are going to hit. I know, you know, I'm going to get the NSS on the bank draft. But, but then again, it's it's all a part of the business. And I've said this before, you know, businesses like Amazon and Walmart, you know, they these they sell millions and billions of dollars in product, but the the world does not end just because they have customers. Uh, returning items, you know, or exchanging, whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's not the goal, but they just they just keep operating. They just keep selling, and that's it's the same mentality. You're you're gonna have those bad days where you don't sell anything. You're gonna have those days where you get you know five chargebacks on the first or the third. But as long as you just keep your head down and just keep working. It's all gonna, it's all gonna even itself out. The numbers will always work themselves out. It's just as long as you, you keep, keep your head down, keep grinding, and it's, it's pretty simple. It, it's all really, I think, too. It's, it's all about being cognizant of what you're saying to yourself. You know, it's the self talk. You know, to dig, to get a little more deeper. Um, you know, I used to, I, I would have freakouts, and I would be punching my steering wheel like pissed off. Um, like, literally, like, I'm like, this sucks, like, I don't think I can do this, and, and you know, here and there, like, you, you, you run into those, um, you run into those circumstances where you're still finding it, and it's just being aware of your thoughts, 
You know, I mean, and if you got to fake it until you make it, then do it, you know? If you got to just keep breathing it in into the ether, um, you know, that's how I overcame it. You know, it wasn't about just, you know, doing it. It wasn't simple for me. You know, it was tough. But I realized, you know, reading books is very important. Um, you know, listening, I mean, they got audible. You can listen to in your car. Instead of listening to, you know, Lil Wayne and Pearl Jam, things like that on the radio, you know, listen to it audible. Listen to, you know, books about, you know, self-thought, power of positive thinking, what to say when you talk to yourself, um, you know, things like that that can really reprogram your brain into maintaining an even keel. But it, it's not tough. I mean, and kind of give you an idea, um, you know, just about, like, mindset, Chase, because um, I know you're a big Dallas Cowboys fan. I was watching this thing on TV, uh, Jack mm. Prescott. Dak Prescott was talking about how he never gives over, he never gives the ball to the defense, right? Like even his teammates. You know, if somebody's on defense, they ask him for the ball, he won't give it to them. I beg to differ. I've seen him give it to him a few times, but I get what you're saying. Okay, well, then he lied on, on TV then. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. He doesn't willingly give it to them. He'll set it down and tell them they can go grab it, but he will never hand them the ball. Like his teammates, just because he doesn't want to get into that habit of being able to hand the ball over the defense. Yeah, I, what I, I do that, right? I mean, just, you know, if, if we just think about it on the simplest way, right? Everything comes in twos. You know, you have night and day. You know, you have morning. You know, everything comes in twos. You know, even you as a human, you know, you have two two ears, two <laughs> hands, two feet, right? Two sides of the heart. So, you know, everything comes in twos. In this business, this is the same thing, you know? Just why is it that at home you have summer clothes? You have winter clothes. Why don't you just keep summer clothes and wear them all year round, even when it snows? It wouldn't make sense. You'd act like you're crazy. You know, if, if you come to Boston and you're wearing, like, shorts and, you know, like a tank top and it's, like, minus 27, you know, somebody might call 911, right? So it's the same thing. In this business, expect the lows. It's coming. It's part of the business. It's not happening to you. It's nature. That's what it is. But if you have the right mindset, when you have that low and expect the high, just shoot for the high. Now, how can you switch going from the low to the high? Is activity, is work. The greatest thing is this, right? If you have too much low and you have no, no control over it, that's bad. You control your low because if your activity is higher, you're going to go to the high. Either you can look back, right, and go worse, or you can go into more activity. You know, like I remember, I remember one week, I sucked, you know, like a vacuum. It was horrible. I called Josh. I'm like, Josh, I'm having a horrible time, man. Josh is like, you know what? You know, read it. Like, you know, just go buy more leads, man. You know, go to this area. They have this lead. I bought 80 leads. I bought them, I think, for like five bucks each. That's why I love Chase. I'm like, I bought like this 80 leads. And I went out to an area in Rhode Island, and I was $18,000. So what did I do? I took myself from low into high. And you can do the same thing. I, can, I promise you, if you sit with us for five minutes, you'll be saying, damn, I'm smarter than these guys. You know, I think I can do it better. So get it done and stop finding excuses. Lows are part of the business. The greatest thing is that you control the load because with more activity, you're going to jump into a high. Good stuff. I love it. I, I, I'm glad that you guys, are, I was able to rope you into doing this today. Um, we're going to have to do it a lot more, but uh, I know that we've got some stuff we're going to be knocking out here in a little bit. So I just want to say thanks for jumping on and thanks for joining us today, and uh, it's much appreciated. You're welcome. If you're on right now and you just tuned in late or you missed the beginning, you, you love hearing the message. You love listening to Rita you know, Roger and Josh talk, uh, you have an opportunity to get a chance to meet them face-to-face, -face, spend some time with them, network with them if you get yourself to Vegas. March 21st, March 22nd, it's going to be going down at the Red Rock Resort. Go to fsroadshows.com and get yourself RSVP. Get your seat reserved. Get a chance to meet Holden Hassel, Roger Chan, Ben Bowman, Rita, Josh, everybody, and you'll want to be there. So uh, make sure you get yourself RSVP'd. Hope you guys have an awesome and productive Friday, and we'll be back at it next week. The moderator has left the conference.